Hey, yo, yo, we're shaking. This is Mr. Cab Cabernet, lifestyle connoisseur. And I got a message for all the men out there, all men, young men in particular. Pay close attention because it could save your life. These are confessions of a lifestyle connoisseur. Lifestyle connoisseur. These are confessions of a lifestyle connoisseur. These are confessions of a lifestyle connoisseur. I'm pretty sure you never felt this. So peep game, right? This conversation, this confession that I'm about to hit you with right now. This conversation is seldom had, I believe, between men, specifically between older men and younger men. And um, this, this message, this confession, one of the most important things a man can do when dealing with women, at any stage in life, but particularly when you're younger, because, you know, you're dumber. Men, one thing we must do, and hear me and hear me well, when dealing with women, we must ask questions. I repeat, we must ask questions. What do I mean by ask questions? What do you mean, Cab? Like, what's your name? What's your sign? I mean, I ask them questions. You know, that that's, that's simple shit. You ain't, no, fool. Of course you ask those questions. That's not the questions that, that you need to be asking, though. That's, that's just... That's just window dressing, man. Now, there are various levels of these questions, but all of them are, are of, of equal importance at different stages. So, for instance, there's certain questions you need to ask before you have sex with a woman that you meet, and there's other questions that need to be asked very soon after you for the first time you have sex. And this will determine these questions, the way they're answered, and how they answer will determine whether you should be having sex with that woman ever again or whether you should even be around her. You dig what I'm saying? So let's start with the questions you ask when before when you meet her before you even have sex. Say you meet her at a club or a night out on the town with you know, fellas or just whatever. You meet a woman and you see the potential for a one night stand situation. You both feeling each other, you you know, meet and greet. You know what I'm saying? Name, you know, kick a little game, whatever. Before you leave with this, once you realize that, you know, it's going to jump off tonight, You before you even get her in the car with you or get in the car with her or get in the cab, one of the first questions you need to be asking is, do you have a man? Why? Why is that important? Because you need to know, first of all, if she got a man or a husband, right, or, or or what type or what type of relationship she has with a man, so that you know to be cautious. You ain't gotta be afraid or scared. You just need to be cautious because you don't know what type of relationship she has. You don't know how long the relationship is. You don't know if she's married. Some of these chicks take their ring off or don't wear a ring when they're out. Um, because they're on that shit, right? Um, but you need to know the, the, you know, know that there's a risk, the risk factor. If she got a husband, you know, is he very jealous, insecure? Does she give him reason to be? Is he, he got a, a tracking device on her car to know where she's at? Is he waiting outside? You see what I'm saying? To follow y'all wherever y'all going. And then you got to deal with some type of physical, physical altercation that could could put you in prison or in a in a in a, in a box or, or whatever you see what i'm saying um and then once you know that you need to know do you have any sexually transmitted diseases ma'am yeah this this is probably one of the most important because it's wild out here Women out here today, they're, they're sexually promiscuous even more than men at this point. It's, 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 and, it's, and, and they, don't even, they don't even hide it. 
So she'll usually tell you. You see what I'm saying? So ask her. Because and let her know, look, I've never had no diseases. So I don't get down unless I know the situation. Be honest. You see what I'm saying? Like and 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 look in her face and her eyes and let her see how long it takes her to answer that question. Right? And then see how she answers. What kind of disease she had, if she had a disease. How long ago was it? Is has it been treated? You see what I'm saying? You have to ask these questions for your own safety, your own good. So now she passed the test. You asked these questions, she answered them to your satisfaction. Now, where are we going? Okay, you don't really wanna take no woman that you just met somewhere back to your crib. That's a no-no, I don't care. You're single, you're living alone, you don't know this woman. It's not a good idea. If you can't afford a room, she needs to have a place or she needs to buy the room. So let's say she got a place, let's come to my place. Okay, now you got to ask other questions. You got kids? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? How many kids you got? Does anybody else live with you? You got roommates? You know, uh, where you live? These types of things are very important. You need to know your surroundings. You need to know where you're at. You don't want to be in a certain environment that you don't know about or you ain't, you know, comfortable in or you know that is that you shouldn't be in, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to be going someplace. She got kids, kids, you know, how old are they? They waking up in the middle of the night, fucking up the groove. They also got, they may have daddy still in the picture. The daddies might have a key to the crib. He might be coming by, bugging out. Again, you got to have, you got to ask these questions. This might sound like it's too much, but there's a way to ask it. You see what I'm saying? So now, you know those things. There's no kids. There's no baby daddies. There's nobody living with her. It's in a safe, comfortable environment. So you go you go over there. Y'all do what y'all do. You, you might even stay the night. But you shouldn't. You should not stay the night, the first night. Do not let her get that comfortable with you. That is going to boost her ego and let her think that the pussy was so good that you wanted to stay, number one. So now she thinks she got some leverage over you. Number two, you could wake up and shit could be totally different. You see what I'm saying? It's daylight now. You know what I mean? It's a, she's, she's sober now. And uh, you don't know what to expect. You're not in your comfort zone. You don't know the, you don't know the chick. So the first night you hit it, you, you leave. You leave her wanting more. You bang that shit out. Okay? Make her want you to stay. And still tell her no. You ain't got to be foul about it. Just, no, thank you. I can't. I got to, you know, I got to get up early in the morning. Whatever the fuck. That, makes, that also lets her know that you ain't chasing her pussy. And you got other things to do. You're a man with, with things to do. And, and you ain't got time to be laying up under her. Cuddling with her. You don't, know, you don't know the board. Right? Now, you went home that night, okay? If you're smart, you're wise, you got up in the morning, she's, she's texting you already, right? Because she, she can't wait for it to happen again. Don't text her first. Don't call her first. She'll probably wait even a day. But if she's one of these, you know... Nymphomaniac chicks, which is a lot of them are, she'll hit you right away. This is when the other questions happen. The second set of questions, the post nut questions. These questions will be better asked, you know, um, in a safe, comfortable environment, face to face. Right? Something, a relaxing environment. Maybe you go out. To a brunch, then you know, uh, you know, or get a glass of wine, a little food, you know, date type shit, right? This is when you start the interview. Okay, you need to treat her now. She's passed the sex, uh, the, the the sex test, right? You feel in the pussy. You like the sex. You like how she get down. You enjoy it. You'd like to do that again with her. So now you got to go to the application. You got to pull out that application. 
What's the application tab? The application is the questions that you're gonna have for her that she has to fill out properly in order to qualify to be in your life another moment, another day, sexually or physically at all, okay? Especially if, you know, it's gonna last more than sex. Like, these are the questions she has to, she has to pass the interview, just like a job interview. So this puts you in a position of power naturally as a man because now you're letting her know I have standards. I got shit going on in my life. I have structure. This, you know, I have discipline. And I'm not letting, I have to know who I'm dealing with in a woman if she's going to be coming into my life because I can't have her coming in with a chaotic nature and a chaos and, or it's chaos and fuckery because that's going to destroy my structure and it's going to it's going to fuck up everything I got going on. You can't have that. Now pay attention. So these questions go more like Are you employed, ma'am? <laughs> Straight up and down. Are you employed, ma'am? Why? Why would you ask that question? See, women know the importance of that question see women ask a lot more questions that's why this this confession and and these questions that's why this confession is for men more so than women because women ask they ask the 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 pre-nut questions automatically because women got that shit down that's part of their makeup because the pre-nut questions are will determine whether they're gonna fuck with you at all they already know whether they want to have sex with you when they meet you, but it's going to determine whether they will. So why should you ask whether she's employed? Because you want to know, number one, if she's employed, if she's making any of her own money, number one, because if she's not making no money and you're going to be dealing with her past this, this dinner, right? She might not even be able to afford the fucking dinner. Even if you paying for it, you want to you want to know that you're dealing with a woman that can afford her own meal. And that also means that you're going to have to be spending your money on her all the time, 100%. Right? So, that's a bill that becomes an expense and now you got to calculate that. All right? So that's a, that's another another mouth to feed. On top of that, you want to know if she's employed because you want to know her work ethic. Gentlemen, you understand? You want to know that this woman is not just lazy sitting around. If you don't work, then how you how you how you paying your bills? You see what I'm saying? How how you pay your rent? How you how you get through life? Are you on welfare? Your government assistance? That's another red flag because there's a certain mind state that brings. It creates laziness. It creates entitlement. You see what I'm saying? I'm just going to sit back and get this no matter what. You want you want a responsible woman. You want to know she has a level of a degree of responsibility and accountability. She's working. She got to get up in the morning, go someplace even if she don't like to be there to get a check. She's disciplined. You dig what I'm saying? It's part of discipline. Then you go to her family. What's your family relationship like? Did you grow up with your mother and father? You think what I'm saying? Very important. That's one of the most important questions you can ask a woman. What's the relationship with your mother and father? Okay? And if she and if she has a bad relationship with her father, or he wasn't around and raise her, there's likely a lot of chaos. She didn't learn certain things that only a father could teach a, a young lady. You understand? So she has daddy issues. Or he wasn't there. Or, you know, a, 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 a father is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a girl's first love. 
as a male. Okay? So, we love to talk about the importance of fathers and sons' lives, but the importance of fathers in, in a daughter's life is just as important on a different scale. When, when she wakes up in the morning, the father wakes up, she needs to see how he behaves. She needs to see the example he sets as a man, how he treats her mother, how he treats her, how he governs the family, how he takes care of things, how he talks, okay? How he implements authority and structure and guidance. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of women today, they think dudes is harsh just because men are talking loud or raising their voice because they're not used to having a man around. Pay attention to what I'm saying. So, shit like this. She didn't have a father around or she, she hates her father or whatever the case is. If she don't respect her father, you're going to have a hard time getting her to respect you. Period. It's too much work. If a woman doesn't have a father around, um, it's a huge red flag, man. You got to choose to deal with that if you want to deal with it. You got to choose. You have to know what you're dealing with. Now, she doesn't have a mother or is that mother issue. Same thing on a different scale. Mothers teach young ladies how to be women. How to treat a man. You know what I'm saying? If a mother was very feminine, cooperative, and, 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 and submissive, you know what I'm saying, to her, her father, she's probably going to be that too. She's going to have a feminine nature. And it's going to be fun and delightful to be around her. Supportive. You know what I'm saying? She don't have none of that. She don't know how to do that. She was never taught. That's destruction for a man of structure. Now, then you're going to ask her, do you want, you want children? How do you feel about children? Okay? You need to know if she wants children. Because mistakes happen, even if you wear a condom. The only thing that's 100% Pregnancy proof is abstinence, as we know. So, is this a woman that, if you were to slip up and get her pregnant, would she be a good mother? Or would she take you through the ringer and, and try to ruin your life? You have to know these things. These are some of the questions you must ask. There's a lot more, actually. But these questions I covered... If you ask these questions, the pre-sex questions and the post-sex questions, and once you get the answers to these questions, you'll know very clearly where or how this woman fits into your life, if she fits in at all. Again, we as men have to be more responsible. The two things we have to protect is our seed and our sanity, our peace. You understand? Th that, those are the things that lead to destruction for men and, 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 and make them unproductive and turn them into victims of these types of women. As I said, these questions could save your life. Once again, this is Mr. Cab Cabernet, Lifestyle Connoisseur. And these are Confessions of a Lifestyle Connoisseur. These are confessions of a lifestyle kind of sore. These are confessions of a lifestyle kind of sore. I'm pretty sure you never felt this kind of...